Okay, we're now live. Hi, this is Elliot Fishman, and welcome to Facebook Live. Today is February 2nd, and welcome to everybody. Hope um, you're doing well. I hope um, you're not in those parts of the country where it's really cold, but um, Baltimore's not too bad. So for February, not bad at all. We have no snow, so that's good. Um, the title of my talk today is Sports Injuries, and some of you know... Um, in the old days, some stadiums would have um, an x-ray machine. I know some of our technologists used to moonlight at sporting events in case somebody needed an x-ray. Well, you know that everything has gotten a lot more than x-rays. Some places, some um, stadiums have partnered with local institutions, including orthopedics or radiology or both, and in fact, even have CTs and MRs attached to the stadium, though that's kind of the rare event. But what we do know is that sports injuries are, are one of the things that every fan speaks about. If you look at this past weekend, uh, whether you're a Philadelphia fan or a San Francisco fan, it really doesn't matter. But you know in the first series, the San Francisco quarterback, the rookie who had won every game, um, hurt his elbow. And in fact, he is going to need um, Tommy John surgery. I think his collateral ligament was ruptured and torn. And that was it, because the only thing San Francisco had was some very senior uh, backup quarterback. And obviously, you were playing in a championship game against a tremendous team like Philadelphia. It was hopeless. They got it to 7-7, seven to seven, but then it was hopeless. And then that guy got a concussion. And so now they brought back the first quarterback who hurt his elbow, who could only throw, and of course was in his throwing hand, so he could only throw less than 10 yards, which was obviously couldn't throw, and so basically the game was over before it started. A lot has been, um, you know, Miami, whether you're a Dolphin fan or not, they were doing great until their quarterback had multiple concussions. I'm not going to speak about the violence or the uh, the problems with football. I'm just going to talk about the medical thing. He had concussions, and the good news was I read yesterday that he's gotten through his concussion protocol, that he's fine, which is great. Um, but you realize how much of sports is dependent on medicine. Concussions. San Francisco, I mentioned that the quarterback, uh, the rookie, but he was the third string quarterback. Remember, one quarterback fractured his ankle and the other fractured his arm. So that's how you lost both of their other quarterbacks. You also read in the papers that the NBA has a problem because um, there a lot of their stars skip a lot of the games because it's a long season, 82 games. You can argue about that. Larry Bird never skipped a game unless he was couldn't stand up. But now they, everyone knows the regular season doesn't count as long as you can make the playoffs. Then you go full steam in the playoffs. But for the fans paying a lot of money, you know, you start the stars when they come to your town. Maybe you're playing a bunch of uh, backup players, which has happened, and it's creating a lot of um, a lot of complaining by the fans. Radiology is really ideal when you think about the things we do: CT and MR. A lot of the injuries, medial collateral ligament is going to be MR. The bony injuries is CT. MR to look at soft tissue injury as well. Uh, concussion, CT, MR, looking at brain contusions and the like. So, so much of what we do and so much of the players and sports. There was a, uh, I forgot the player's name. He originally signed with San Francisco. Then they had a problem because he had a prior fracture of his ankle. And the doctors were unsure about giving a 12 year contract to someone who's has a metal rod in, who's only 25 or so, who's having pain. Then the same thing happened. He signed with the Mets, and the Mets said, okay, Met doctors are the same thing. And then he went, I think, to Minnesota. The issue is that, particularly now when you're signing long term contracts, the health of the individual is very critical. Now, you can't predict the health, right? Who knew that in the first series this guy was going to get hit, hyperextend his arm, and tear his ligament? Okay, someone steps in a hole, someone goes skiing. There's a million ways you can get injured. 
it's hard to predict that. You can't exclude that, and that's the risk of contracts, which is why when they do long-term contracts, they also get long-term insurance. But radiology more and more is playing an impact. Now, it's interesting when they talk on the TV shows and the sports, and the, they don't mention what's gonna happen. They'll say the person hurt themselves, and they'll be evaluated. In the paper, they may say the patient's getting an MR the next day or a CT, things like that. But I think how we really are involved, I think it's a very important thing. And of course, with sports injuries, it's not just the athletes, right? It's the weekend athletes. It's all of us, people running too much stress fractures, people falling, fracturing wrists, ankles, ribs, people being in, um, I'm gonna leave out the whole trauma thing of car accidents and gunshot wounds and all the other traumas you can have and just speak about sports injury, repetitive injury, tennis elbow, uh, patients who go jogging, who run a lot, stress fractures, but also the wear and tear on their knees and wear and tear on their hips and wear and tear on their spine. So we are involved a lot in that. I think radiologists, particularly as orthopedic radiology, musculoskeletal radiology became more of a focus, become more involved with the orthopedic surgeons. Now orthopedic surgeons, they also are specialized. There's an elbow guy, there's a wrist guy, there's a knee guy, there's a shoulder guy, there's an ankle guy. Um, some are in sports medicine, so maybe they look at two joints. But when it gets down to it, there's one guy for the surgery of the shoulder, and there's one guy for the elbow, there's one guy for the wrist. So there's a lots of subspecialization. I think it's important for radiology groups to be involved with their orthopedic surgeons and get involved in the subspecialty care, and I think we do that at Hopkins. Uh, and I know all of you do that in your own practice as well, because uh, in sports, you know, you're looking at a guy who has a $300 million contract, uh, you know, you want that guy to perform. Um, look at this weekend. Now, we don't bet, I don't bet sports, and you know, I don't know how many of you do, but people bet sports, you know, and they really pay attention to injuries. People look at the injury roster. I don't even watch the games at all, let alone looking at the injury roster. So it's interesting how much of an impact imaging has on sports. And it's becoming more and more. Looking at patients, looking at players' elbows to see how their cartilage looks before they train, before they evaluate, before they sign. Medicine has become a big part, and radiology has become a big part of the evaluation of athletes to know the risks of patients. Also in healing, should someone, should someone be out four weeks or six weeks? This whole thing with concussions, with his Miami quarterback, should he come back at all or is he at a higher risk for concussion than a normal person or someone who hasn't had a concussion before? These concussion protocols are important because Forgetting the sports, these are people's lives on the line, and this repetitive injury from sports has been a big thing with early degenerative changes of the brain and lots of uh, sad stories in football, especially. Uh, baseball, you know, it's more uh, career ending injuries, shoulders and elbows and things like that, tearing your menisci so you're not as fast as you used to be. There's so much involved with that. So I think the good news is radiology, get involved, pay a lot of attention. Um, you know, I think it's, you, you could, what you learn from the extreme athletes can be used on the regular patients. Again, prevention of stress injuries, prevention of repetitive injuries is very important. And I think you're gonna see a lot more guidelines on how to do things. So that's my story for today. Um, any questions? I see uh, John Bikinos from Body CT. Hi, John. I spoke to him earlier today. He's just across the street. I'm at the outpatient center. He's in the hospital. But um, again, a lot is going to be written more and more, particularly about the concussion injuries, but also about just the host sports injuries and the impact. And so, once again, radiology has an opportunity to be front and center and kind of not leave it for the orthopedic surgeons or the internists to talk about this, but for radiology to talk about how we're involved and get some good PR that we're really involved in helping patients with detection of injuries, with 
healing of injuries and knowing when that athlete is ready to go back on the field. So with that, have a great day.